So, watch it with these fucking life hacks. But there you go. We defended Lothlorien successfully, and the Fellowship is now approaching... I mean, Mul? No. We're approaching Amon Hen. That, I think, is where we're gonna finish this session. Depending on how fast th things are gonna go. I don't want to take up too much space on my hard drive, because unfortunately I'm still kind of limited on that. Especially now that I have uh, several other playthroughs recorded and stored in my storage. Still got Spyro 3 and Monster World 4 to deal with. So this mission is a little bit different. It also unlocks, uh, for the very first time, the Armory. Armory is an important building which we must get a hold of. It allows you to gain some upgrades, which, well, the Rohirrim can take advantage of. The farm is ready. The farm is ready. <laughs> Note that our population limit has been improved. That's good. A little bit more than the last time, though. I think we were only supposed to get, uh, what, uh, plus 50, maybe? So we got plus 20 from somewhere else. I think LaFlorian. I didn't pay attention, so excuse me if I didn't notice it. Oh, hey, what, what is that horn? What, is somebody's gonna attack us? You bet your ass, of course we're gonna get attacked. <laughs> the enemy comes, and the enemy is... gonna go. Bye-bye! <laughs> Fucking asshole. Nobody invited you here. For the first base, I don't recommend going straight for the armory, actually. The first base should be the place that can be mostly universal. Especially if you got this tiny thing. I recommend spending most of, the, of your build spots for caps, and dedicate the last two to a well and a stable. In this mission, at least. Because this is going to generate a steady amount of resources, which you can use. And also, it will be a great uh, spot to return to after a fight to rejuvenate. Also, don't forget to spend some resources on the tower spots to build some towers. While you're away, your base may get attacked, after all. And the towers do a pretty good job at defending. So you want them. But you may be wondering, what kind of resource are we collecting here anyway? It looks, it looks like, a, like a battle. Well, you got me there, because it's a battle, and it's a very non-descriptive kind of resource. I like to think they're just collecting bullshit in a battle. <laughs> we have 75 bullshitium, and it's growing. Always good to have so much bullshitium. But you can never have too much bullshitium, as we'll find out later on. We're doing this mission not only to progress the plot a little bit, but also to gain a resource gathering bonus. It is a bonus that improves our resource gathering. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. <laughs> I don't have to spell out everything, right? <laughs> But yeah, uh, in terms of resource gathering, I think you can get like three or four times the resource gathering bonus in total. Just uh, just as soon as you get to two times the gathering bonus, then you're gonna feel some pretty good fucking boost. You'll be getting twice the amount of resources no matter what. But three times and the maximum amount you can get, which I'm not entirely sure what it is right now. Oy vey. You only need like... I don't know, I don't think you even need two bases anymore to make tons of cash. You get cash out the ass. The cash flows through your anus. <laughs> like a diary of gold. Excuse my language, but it's just the way it is. It is a good kind of shit that flows freely. Yeah, see, I'm already just enjoying my... A uh, campaign and some pricks are trying to attack the base. Too bad for them. Oi, hey, what is this? Why, this is an outpost. The outpost only has three spots that you can use to build stuff in, but that is okay. You can make use of them. 
Uh, I don't think anyone's gonna be attacking this spot yet. We should return to here before somebody breaks down the fucking tower. I hate when they do that. Bastardos. Here I'm gonna set up a little camp where you can heal up, get a little more resource. Oh yeah, look at that, they broke the fucking tower, what a surprise. I think I'm also gonna get uh, the armory on that spot. That last bit. We never have the resources for it, because the armory is the most expensive building, unfortunately. Now, don't worry if your building gets damaged. As long as it's not destroyed, it can be repaired, and it will be repaired. Because all buildings repair themselves automatically, over time. Well, there are some exceptions, but for the most part, they all do that. So it's okay. It's okay if I make a mistake. You know, speaking of which, I heard from a lot of other channels that people are so bitchy about people when they make mistakes, then they whenever they get something wrong, because they weren't unnerved enough or something. But I haven't noticed that at all. I guess that's a good thing. In fact, I'm quite uh, surprised that there hasn't been a. Tons of bitching on uh, other playthroughs that have been popular lately, like uh, Chicken Run, uh, Earth 2150, War of the Ring. It's quite nice to see that people are reasonable and, uh, well, normal. <laughs> Glad to see you guys uh, acting civilized. It only shows that uh, the, the YouTube community is uh, slightly improving. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. Uh, it's a lot to expect from people to be normal in an environment where their speech is pretty much uncontrolled and they have very little in a way of being punished. I mean, who the fuck's gonna punish them for saying, Oh, you're a bitch! I don't think anyone's gonna do that. I don't think anyone's gonna bother doing that. And those who will bother to do that, well, that's their problem. But it is nice to know that things are improving. Don't mind if I claim your resources. Oh, look at that. Rohirrim archers. Don't. <laughs> yeah, as much as you'd think it would be a good idea, it is not. It's not so. It's actually pretty fucking shit. I don't know why, but the Rohirrim archers are just fucking garbage. For one, they cannot shoot while moving. Which you would expect them to be able to do, I mean, they're horse archers. What the fuck's wrong with you people? <laughs> Shoot while you're riding, you're not doing anything. Whatever. Uh, plus, they're not that impressive. They... Keep in mind that they're still cavalry, by definition. Which means... That they die pretty easily from anything that's either... Arrows or pikes. Oh yeah, speaking of which, there is uh, uh, cav there are cavalry units for either side. Both evil and good have cavalry. That's kind of expected, right? Yeah, of course. But the thing is, good guys have so very little in the way of pikemen. I think they only got one unit which acts as a pikeman. And that, oddly enough, is the Gondor Tower Guard. <laughs> Which we don't even get access to for a long fucking time. So, uh, what the fuck? Why can't we get some more pikes? Oi, they, it's the enemy base. It's the enemy encampment. Eh, let's back away for a bit. Ah, the throw spear ability from Eomer allows him to throw a spear. No shit. But that spear is used for single targets. And the uh, Outlaw Leadership ability is a very, very powerful ability for Eomer. Whoever is near him when kills are made, doesn't matter if he makes the kills, anyone who's near Eomer who makes the kills will get a little bit of money. You get kills and you get money at the same time. It's quite nice. Ah, abilities. Let's talk about... Uh, not abilities, upgrades. Upgrades 
work a little weird around here. First things first, you need to purchase the upgrade. Okay, that's the normal part. But then, once you purchase the ability, you'll notice something that not a lot of people might agree with. Some people might find it kind of dumb. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. For this game, it kind of works. It just kind of works. <laughs> it just works. Yeah, but seriously, for this game, it just... I don't know, it just works. <laughs> That's all I can say about it. The system is fine. But yeah, here we go. We got the banner upgrade. The banner carrier upgrade. These guys cannot purchase these because they're already at rank 2. The banner carrier upgrade allows you to instantly level up the battalion to level 2. Which means that they're not only slightly stronger, but they also have the ability to regenerate units if they're not attacked. Pretty useful ability. Keep in mind that this only regenerates dead units. As in, if you had 5 guys in the battalion and you lost 3, you, you will get the 3 units back, but the 2 remaining units that are still wounded, they will not be healed. You need to use, you need to use either the heal spell or the wells for that. <sighs> but, uh, yeah, look at that. Rank 1. What is this? You gotta buy your upgrade. That's right. You gotta buy upgrades. After buying the upgrades. <laughs> and that is where some people may find it to be kind of fucking shitty. But why? Well, simple. It's a lot of money wasted to, to not only get the upgrades, but to also upgrade the unit. It's a little annoying, considering that the previous RTS in uh, Lord of the Rings uh, universe, War of the Ring, had it much more simplified. Whenever you bought the upgrade, it was automatically applied to whoever needed that upgrade. Whereas here, you have to not only purchase the upgrades, but also... Uh, well, purchase the upgrade for the specific unit you want to have the upgrade. There is a slight benefit, though. Because I don't need to keep the armory around after I purchase the upgrades. The upgrades are there to stay. Yeah, look, armory is gone, but I can still buy the heavy armor. I don't need an armory to purchase new upgrades. At this point, I can just keep buying upgrades for the units and everything will be fine. This is useful. Granted, I wish it was more like uh, War of the Ring, where you didn't need to do it like this, where they just automatically apply the upgrade. But this is fine, I don't really care. You can also see whenever... You can also tell whenever you got everyone upgraded, when you see this uh, loading bar. That means that the last of the unupgraded units are about to be upgraded. So everything's coolio from there. And the horse shield upgrade, that's a unit specific upgrade. Only the Rohirrim can have this. But, you need to upgrade the stables first before you can get this upgrade. Upgrading the stable is easy. Just make units. Ah, there's just that little teeny tiny little problem, isn't there? We don't have infinite population. So that can be a bit of a bitch. For the evil guys, it's easy. Once you have uh, filled out your population and you want to make more units just to upgrade the buildings, that's fine. Either shove them into the enemy and get them killed, which is probably what you'll have to do with the good guys since that's the only thing you can do with them. Or, with the evil guys, shove the units into the slaughterhouse and sell them. It gets... Uh, Sold, basically. They, they kill off a unit, you get your population back, and you get some money. Well, some money back, I should say. You don't get extra money out of it. But yeah, if you let uh, enough units to be built, you will gain a bit of uh, experience and rank up the building. 
In the later Battle for Middle Earth games, you will have a button to simply spend resources to upgrade the building, which I think is a better idea, but whatever. I guess this adds a bit of more, a little bit more challenge. This can take a bit of time, so the best thing you can do is up, is just purchase the best unit you can get, like the most expensive one. That pushes the XP bar the most. Ah, perfect. Just managed to get uh, the upgrade unlocked. Let's get this thing unlocked, because it will improve my armor. That means more money needs to be spent on upgrades. I may! Luckily, luckily, as long as you play the campaign, you do not need to repurchase upgrades for your units. As long as the units survive, which the game encourages you to do, to make sure your units survive, they will keep the upgrades. And that is really fucking helpful. <laughs> Because sometimes, you don't really have the opportunities to make uh, big, nice economies and upgrade your units, you just wanna kill shit. And that's also the reason why all of those Ithilian Rangers and Elven Warriors destroy the rest of the campaign once you have a full army of them. <laughs> because you can keep rolling with the elite army through the maps and just demolish everything in sight. You become a super army. Practically indestructible. It's pretty impressive to look at it. I don't think I'll be able to show it off today though. It takes a while to get to that part in the campaign. But there we go. We got ourselves an army. We got ourselves the upgrades. It's only safe to say. We gotta go beat up some orcs. Oi, wait a minute. Not all. Rohirrim. Hashtag not all Rohirrim have gotten the upgrades. <laughs> uh, any bonus things? Rank up EMR 1 level. Yeah, that requires killing things, and uh, if you don't get to kill enough things, you won't get to upgrade. Some bonus uh, missions will be pretty much the same as... It will be the same across uh, several missions, like there is one that says Upgrade your battalion to have uh, heavy armor. And you can just beat that by just starting the mission if you have a battalion which already has it. Making that uh, bonus mission kind of pointless. There we go. Oh no, the slaughterhouses for the enemy team have upgraded to a point where they have towers to defend themselves with. That's not very nice. That's okay though, because we have the technology. We stab the shit out of the enemy technology, which we can use uh, against these fuckers. Let's see if we can find a nearby settlement around here, which we could uh, recapture and turn into a healing station. The best thing to do in this game at... At the beginning, at least, I don't know if it counts later on, is to cut off the enemy's uh, resource supply. If you cut off the resources, we can't make units or buildings. And if you can't make units or buildings, well, tough fucking luck then, isn't it? <laughs> right, this is gonna take a little bit, so um, let's see what we can do. My guys aren't totally wrecked. I didn't. Uh, I didn't lose any units yet, which is good. But one of them is gonna die pretty soon, and uh, I prefer if he didn't, because he's useful. Destroy the slaughterhouse. Later on in the uh, Battle for Middle Earth 2 and uh, the expansion pack, Rise of the Witch King. Building bases will be a lot more traditional. You can just build wherever you feel like as long as the building fits And because of that we had to change the way uh, gathering resources works because we still insisted on using uh, You know the same buildings as in this game Yeah, they just they, they just like 
Let's keep using the same thing we got. It practically runs on the same engine and everything. So, the way it works is that you have to space out the resource gathering buildings in a way that gains you the most uh, yield. Because uh, the way it works is that uh, the resource buildings have this radius of effect. And uh, the further away you are from other resource buildings, the better the yield is, but also the more space you have, uh, the more uh, yield you get, to the point that you can max out your yield to like 100% or something. I find that system to be kind of annoying, because you still have to build uh, large amounts of uh, resource gathering buildings, like... Oh, come on. Like, uh, farms and whatever. And eventually you run out of space, you can't expand way too much at the start, because then you're just gonna have trouble just moving around, you won't have enough resources to build an army and defend all of the stuff you built. So that, that's a bit of a shittier system, plus I think resource buildings also improve your population limit, so that also makes it a bit annoying. Eventually you just end up stacking all of your shit in nice tight little packs because it's just much easier that way. Sure, you don't get as many resources at anymore, but what can you do? It's the best way to go about it. You still get the population boost. The population boost does not uh, does not get any bigger or smaller depending on that yield ratio that I mentioned. I don't know why Isengard built the fucking armory if they ain't gonna do anything with it. You know, all things considered, this really isn't all that hard. And I did take hard mode, that much I'm certain of. Well, get used to it. This game isn't very hard. With the good guys. With the bad guys, it's a little more difficult, but... Well, if you played any RTSs before... I think you'll be able to handle it, it's really not that hard. It is a good idea to destroy the, the citadel first, if you have a possibility. That is, if you don't get attacked by random things while attacking the citadel, because that way you prevent enemies from building new buildings. If the citadel is destroyed, you cannot build anything new. Because the Citadel, well, it's pretty much the control building. You need it to build anything. It's also used to summon heroes. But I think that's mostly relegated to whatever happens in a skirmish mode rather than here. Here, you only get to resummon fallen heroes. Because, you know, sometimes you get killed. <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, I don't, I don't think the enemy has an army anymore. But they do have a settlement, an outpost. This lumber mill is unimportant. If the enemy has just these one spot, one tile building plots, that doesn't count as surviving, because these plots only allow resource gathering buildings. There you go. Just like I said, that lumber mill does not save the Isengard army from getting wrecked. They need a, a build. Like they need a base that allows them to build uh, unit production facilities. So, what are my stats? Was it a victory or was it a total victory? Let's see. Total victory! Yeah, boy. And yeah, here we go. There are all of your units. You can see where they first were trained, what's their current level, how many missions they complete, how many units they killed. It's pretty cool. You can also rename some of the units. But why? <laughs> That's not necessary. Don't do that. Best Ford defended. Oh, hey, what's got? Oh, shit. Kruik on Amon Hen. This is the fanfiction mission. Say that three times fast. Fanfiction mission. <laughs> well, yeah, this is it. 
I mean, I like how they made the cutscenes with in-game graphics. That's so fucking cool. I mean, they look pretty fucking ugly, but, uh, come on. This is effort. <laughs> they, they had to do this. They had to put effort into this to not only make it happen, but make it look kind of cinematic, too. It's kind of like something you'd see in, in, in the movies. This is pretty fucking cool. Oh yeah, that, that Uruk with the white uh, face? Uh, I don't think he ever had a name in the movies or the book, but here he is named Lurtz. Keep that in mind, I guess. I don't know if that's important or not. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, all hobbits are more powerful in ranged combat than in melee. I have no fucking idea how that's real. By the justice. So anyway, just like in the movie, uh, the fellowship has been attacked, ambushed at Amon Hin, and slightly separated too. It is important to protect Frodo and Sam. Yeah, look at that. Frodo and Sam must survive. That means Gandalf and Aragorn may get killed, and other heroes too. But don't worry, if they die. They'll just respawn! Not in this mission, I think, but they'll respawn later on. In different missions. Kill the Uruks attacking Legolas and Gimli. <laughs> uh, well, they say you should do that, but in all honesty, they seem to be doing just fine. Especially Legolas here, who has the arrows rain. I don't think he has it unlocked yet, but he's just doing it in a cutscene. That's like a nice little showcase of what you'll be able to do later on. Oh yeah, if you press number pad 5, you can center the camera. That's pretty good. Fixes the rotation and everything. Oi vey trolle! He just ripped out a whole tree! He would be perfect for getting the right Christmas tree out of the ground, wouldn't he be? <laughs> In fact, why don't we just hire them to help us out with our Christmas decorating needs? Anyway, there you go. We met up. Everybody's here. We have obtained the leadership ability. The leadership ability is, uh, not useful for heroes. <laughs> it does not affect heroes in the slightest. What it does, though, is affect regular units. They improve their armor and combat experience gained. So yeah, every normal unit that is near a hero with leadership will get more armor and they'll gain experience faster. I don't think this affects heroes at all. You can tell if they're affected by a little yellow glow. Hide from who? Oh, the war riders. Hello. Here goes one of them. Here goes another one. Here goes another one. Well, <laughs> I do like that uh, the second game, Battle for Middle Earth 2, has a bit uh, more, uh, a bit, uh, bit, a bit of a wider selection of heroes. Because uh, here the selection is pretty shitty. I don't think you even get to summon all of the Nazgul as the evil guys, all nine that is, which War of the Ring was able to do. And before you say anything, yes, I know, it says that you can only summon 8 Black Riders, but you forget that the ninth Black Rider is the Lord of the Nazgul. So before you say anything, well, don't. <laughs> gotcha there, bitch. <laughs> anyway. Boromir and the other Hobbits are under attack. We must protect them! That's a lot of Urukai. But do you Uruk care? <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna do that again, that was pretty tasteless. But all things considered, do you really give a shit? They're killing them like nothing. They drop it like flies. Okay, you better tell the Malay guys not to go after these guys, because we're gonna go all over the place trying to get to them. What the fuck? Oh, he was just running with a random sword for some reason? Whatever. Anyway, once you get to where uh, Boromir is supposed to be, you'll find that he's just fine, but then suddenly the red glow of red 
appears on top of him. What is that all about? That just means he's pinned. Pinned to the floor by Lurtz. That piece of shit. What? While the hero is pinned by Lurtz's evil power. Come on, Aragorn. While the hero is pinned to the floor by Lurtz's evil power. He can't move. And he also takes more damage. Fuck you, Lurtz! <laughs> Damn! The fucking flashlight of doom wrecked his ass. Oh shit, he's going berserk now. And he's dead. Now you can see why this has become... <laughs> the fanfiction mission. Because Boromir lives! This is the part in the book and the movies where Boromir got shot and deathered by the Urukai. Well, killed I should say, but whatever, you get the joke. Yeah, Boromir was supposed to die here, but he didn't! Oh shit! <laughs> Run away! Except no. Come back here, you bitch. Just use your powers. What, are you scared or something? Don't be scared, these are just the berserkers. They take a lot of damage because they're naked little shitheads that can't defend themselves worth jack and shit. But that doesn't mean anything. They're strong. They, they have a lot of damage. They do a lot of damage, but uh, their, their health is pathetic. Like, they have no armor. So don't worry. You're going to get them wrecked. Nice. Alright, Gandalf's abilities have been slightly recharged. Wash are they? It is a troll. Well, that's uh, inconvenient. Gimli, what the fuck are you doing? Come back here, you bitch. No shit, he's in peril. He picked a fucking fight. Look the asshole that he is. Okay, Gimli, please, for the love of shit, don't fucking die on me. I kind of need you. Hold on. We need to heal up first. Here, eat some king's foil. Mmm, delicious. Wait, what am I doing? Get out of here. Ah, shit. I forget. Wizard Blast attacks the closest target. So if you're gonna use it, get as close to your targets as possible. Else you're gonna miss out. What the fuck's going on there? Oh, the boat! The boat is here! The other two uh, hobbits were taken away to Isengard. Uh, yeah, here you go! <laughs> Boromir lives! Say what to me? <laughs> uh, artistic freedoms, I suppose, but what the hell? <laughs> Of all the artistic freedoms to take, why this one? He wasn't supposed to live. Now Faramir has no reason to be a suicidal cunt. And there goes the pilgrims of uh, the Shire, alongside with their bodyguards, the Urukai. They're on their pilgrimage to visit the wizard of many colors. Nowadays it sounds like a, like a gay joke, <laughs> but... Trust me, it has nothing to do with that. Total victory! Oh yeah, 20 plus command plus 1 power. We're doing great, boys. But I'm getting a little tired. Probably because of all the yapping that I'm doing. Anyway. After that, you're forced once again to fight with Eomer's army. We'll take care of that later. But let me tell you something before we call it a session. Later on, I will not be showcasing these uh, mini-missions, as l let's call them like that, where you have to control lesser heroes which don't really do anything and don't really mean anything to the plot. Not the heroes, the missions themselves, I mean. These will be skipped to save time and space. We'll be focusing mostly on the missions that are either significant, like if there's some kind of special mission, like is there something different about them? Maybe you need to approach them differently or something? Maybe they're hard? 
or if they're campaign missions, like important plot missions, like attacking Isengard or defending the Helm's Deep and such. Oh yeah, don't don't worry about Edoras, we never go there as we did the ice. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> but yeah, the mini missions will be skipped, unless there's something important about them. As for the rest of the, uh, of the playthrough, we'll be going mostly through the campaign missions and the significant mini missions. Until then, I'm Waldo Richards from the Game Train, and I would like to thank you for watching Battle for Middle Earth. We'll come back in the next part, where we're going to take care of more Rohan's problems with the filthy Urukai, and then defend the Helm's Deep. See you later.